All right, the bud made a delicious pasta, and we were getting ready to watch a scary Korean movie. Ooh. And guess what? We're not rocking and rolling, and we don't want to kill ourselves or each other. So I just checked in with the uh, Marine Reserve office here on Hunting Key, and uh, it cost us 60 US dollars for the two of us to be here for a week. And there is a trail on the island, and I'm gonna go check that out right now. It's more than we say or do. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty cool. rewarding day. The biggest reward is right now just relaxing and reading my hornblower book and the boat is just calm. <laughs> There's almost no motion and after yesterday it's hard for me to express how good that makes me feel and I guess it's one of those things that by putting yourself in shitty situations like you, you can get joy out of simpler uh, good situations and I feel that way right now that's for sure all right the bud made a delicious pasta and we were getting ready to watch a scary Korean movie Ooh. and guess what we're not rocking and rolling and we don't want to kill ourselves or each other we did it we got out of the roll. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it reminds me, like you were saying, when we sailed into Belize, and we had that super rough passage, and we pulled up into the English Channel, and then we tucked up behind some little small island that was not noteworthy. drop jaw, beautiful, noteworthy. Um, but we were just like, oh my god, this is amazing. <laughs> the boat's <laughs> not leaking, there's not salt water everywhere. We're not tossing and turning, like we can both sleep at the same time. It makes you really appreciate just a freaking calm anchorage. <laughs> I gotta stop filming because I'm so hungry. <laughs> Let's do it. It's good. Scary movie. <laughs> All right, first morning in Hunting's K. So we're gonna head over to the patch reef back there, which we passed uh, on our way coming into uh, this little anchorage because I saw some really cool little patch reef.
making a little salad over here. Jordan made delicious looking rice and fish. Yeah, that's right. I, I uh, grilled up the fish or fried it. And it is so good. Oh my gosh, fresh fish. Fresh snapper is just delicious. I just feel so good right now. It's so hot here, but snorkeling for like three hours straight, like your body temperature comes down to the point where like, you're really cold, you know? My body feels good that it's enjoying the heat, I guess I would say. Ugh, today's been a really great day so far. It's like fake light, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> Man, the good call on bringing the camera and going on a walk. <laughs> All right, bud, how was your day today? It was nice. We finally found some really vibrant coral with a lot of fish, a lot of life. And how's our stay in Belize in general? Yeah, Belize in general I really enjoyed. I feel like I wish we wouldn't have spent so much time in northern Belize. It just seems like as we've gone further south, there's it's a more like gentle, friendly island vibe that I really like. Um, and the atolls were definitely my favorite part. Just swimming in super deep, cold water and seeing uh, lots of big fish was awesome. The culture really kind of shocked me. <laughs> All the different uh, languages and backgrounds of people. It's a really very diverse population. <laughs> what about you? What do you? Have you enjoyed Belize? Yeah, I've, I think it was a perfect first experience for getting back into cruising. There was a lot of remote islands to explore. We were by ourselves most of the time. I guess it got a little awkward from time to time because we weren't sure if we were doing something that was actually worth doing because it was just like, wow, we're the only people here. <laughs> <laughs> I think that our experience in Belize has been a good wake up call for what cruising is gonna be like, what we need to prepare ourselves for. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't easy and that was probably a good thing, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just gonna say, like, I feel like every step of our journey has taught us different lessons. The boatyard, obviously, was just like, keep going, don't give up, <laughs> no matter how much it sucks. <laughs> and then Isla Mujeres was just be scrappy about finding work, and then once you find work, try to find, like, good, consistent, high quality work. And then now this lesson is shallow water cruising. <laughs> and remote island cruising. I think we have learned a lot about, you know, navigating through kind of sketchy areas. Should we get back to boat? Yeah, let's do it. Oh. Thank you. Love you. All right, and we're underway again. So today we are off to an island called Sapodilla Key, or it's also called Rugged Key. We are dodging some of the coral heads that are around us. Now, this area is actually really easy. We're exiting to the west this time, and I don't know if you can tell by the watercolor, but this is much more free of coral heads. It's a real nice sunny day, real clear water today, and I can see basically like a, a nice line that we can take out and then there's a small little shoal up ahead. We'll have to go around and then we're good. Other nice thing about doing this today, it's middle of the day right now, is we're gonna come back tonight, anchor here tonight, and then leave in the morning for Guatemala. So this way we'll have nice tracks laid down so that we can leave you know, relatively early in the morning, not worry so much about the light. We, of course, we've got a big thunder system to our north. It looks like, to me, it's dissipating slowly, but you never know. Hopefully it doesn't come this way. <laughs> we'll see. Wish us luck. Wow, so this is a 
much better way in and out of this anchorage. The path we've taken is almost completely clear of obstructions. With a lot of these areas that are fairly uncharted, sometimes just figuring it out for yourself and poking around is the best way to find a safe entrance. You looking at, bud? Well, <laughs> this is crazy, but what I thought was Sapodilla Key is actually not Sapodilla Key, and in fact, it's not on any of the charts at all. We were heading here to Sapodilla Cay, and Sapodilla Cay doesn't have anything cool going on, and this island that we're heading to is right here, where, like I said, Navionics, Garmin, and Rauscher, they don't have an island there. Which, like, to me is the craziest thing because how could you not chart it? Like, you can see it from, like, miles away. Maybe it used to be, like, Sapodilla and somebody came and planted palm trees on it. Yeah, it's possible that it was just, like, a sand spit. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, bud. What do you think? Should we try and get up close to that one? We don't know anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah? And I think the key here is going to be just being totally cool with not making it. You know, like if it looks too sketchy, you just turn around. This is kind of exciting though, an uncharted island. How cool is that? Literally an uncharted island. <laughs> okay, so that is Sapodilla Cay, where we were going. It looks very uninteresting. And then up ahead is the uncharted island. So we're gonna go check it out. Okay, went up the mast to get a look. I mean, we've got good water all the way up to the island. You can see on our starboard side, there's a bunch of shallows. Kind of on either side of the island, there's shallows. To our port side, there are shallows. But dead ahead, we look good all the way. This is super exciting. Man, so we are creeping right up to this island. It literally looks like it's deep all the way right up next to it. We're in about 40 feet of water right here. The key now is trying to find a good spot to actually drop the hook. Because a lot of this looks like coral. So we'll want to be real careful about that. We don't want to bust up any coral doing this. But I'm definitely... Oh, hard to starboard! Okay, we got 38 feet below us. Looks like it's definitely uh, sandy down there. A little bit light, light blue. So I think this is where we're gonna try and anchor. Hunting K, that was absolutely amazing. 
Yeah, that was really cool. Like, I think we've both been snorkeling and and, and free diving and, and diving for years, and neither of us have seen anything like that in the sense of the density of living coral and the size of it too. I mean, so it was completely like the floor was just covered in living coral and it went on as far as you could see, you know, underwater. It was, in, it was just incredible. Like that was, that was wild. Mm -hmm. You know, like you hear people talk about uh, coral bleaching and, and the reefs sort of not being anything near what they used to be. And we've seen a lot of reefs here, especially, where it's dead reef, you know, there's very little living coral. Um, the structures are still there, the old, you know, skeleton is there, but there's very little living coral. It was almost like a, emotionally moving for me to like be like, oh my God, like this is what all the reefs I've ever like swam on used to look like. It's like sad, but it was also insanely beautiful like that. I really consider that to be one of them, like almost like a pivotal point in my life, <laughs> like getting to actually see that, you know, actually see what coral reefs used to look like. Yeah, I just remember when I put my mask on and looked from the dinghy down below, I, I just couldn't believe it. I was like, stop the dinghy, like it's right here. Yeah. <laughs> like my eyes didn't even understand what they were taking in initially because it was just so thick and vibrant. It was, it was really cool. I feel like that puts a nice punctuation to our experience in Belize because I think leaving Mexico and starting cruising again, like we were both in the back of our minds like sort of thinking, is all of this work worth it, you know? And that, that we hadn't answered that question yet. You know, all the work that we had done and all the sacrifices we had made to like maintain a cruising lifestyle and to get the boat ready to cruise again and put away enough money to start cruising again. And I think Belize in general showed us that like, yeah, it is worth it. And I think today, like in particular, felt that way to me. Yeah.